Hey everybody, Dirilly here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Code Realize, Guardian of Rebirth. I believe we just started chapter 5. We just started a chapter in the last episode, and unfortunately there's not really any pausing right when the chapter thing turns over, so I'm not able to display the nice little chapter screen when I first start these videos, but um... Anyway, uh, we're at the beginning of a chapter, <laughs> yeah, whether it's chapter 5 or not. We have uh, had a confrontation with Dracula, and we have invited him to join our little party here. And then uh, when we're done, he can do with Van Helsing as he chooses. But for now, he's supposed to be our ally. Sit back, relax, and let old lady Dorilly read you a story. He runs with all his strength. Through an empty wilderness, a wasteland with no living thing in sight, he runs through a charnel field of death. <sighs> the dense fog sticks to his body. He flings off the gas mask he is wearing and covers his pale face with his hands. Oh, oh, why? How could such a thing? He has escaped from a mountain of corpses, from that massive pile of unmoving bodies. What? What have I done? Unable to remain on his feet, he crashes to his knees. What cruelty! The scene is burned into his mind. A small child reaching out for help, then dying on the spot. It was nothing less than hell. And the person responsible for that hell is none other than himself. It's... it's all my fault. Ah, ah, ah. He feels that his mind will break, faced with a truth that he cannot escape. Ah! He continues to scream until the rain that begins to fall drowns out every trace of his voice. He bolts upright in his bed, his hands clenching the sweat-soaked sheets. A dream. His heart is hammering, seeming to echo loudly in the silence. He presses tightly against his chest and squeezes out a gasping statement. Oh, that's right. I... I can never be forgiven. A blue sky fills the window outside. Morning light lances between the clouds and caresses his face, and he turns away. It's such a nice day. It's been about a week since the Vampire de la Croix II joined us at the mansion. Even so, being on a kill-or-be-killed basis with him, we have yet to fully warm up to each other. Naturally, it isn't easy for our hearts and minds to close this gap between us. For now, the fact that he has stopped attacking innocent, unrelated people has been an adequate improvement for us. Cece, let's go to breakfast. Cece responds with enthusiasm. Later, St. Germain has been helping us with the living expenses for the past few days. However, this is only temporary, and we are all determined to find a source of income. We all have our own ideas how to overcome this financial dilemma, like spending less or finding practical work. Maybe I can start a side job at home to help everyone out. I have ideas about this, but because I have to wear gloves, I'm discouraged that I won't be able to do any detailed work. I touch my chest without thinking about it. The Horologium. It acts as my heart and makes me a monster. Will I someday be able to rid my body of the poison that flows through it? Monster. I can still vividly remember the words. Malice. Hatred. Hostility and fear. I was attacked in the past by words that cut as sharp as knives. By emotions that penetrated as deeply as any bullet. <laughs> Cece barks and I return to the present. He is looking up into my face as if concerned about me. No, I'm fine. Let's go, Cece. He barks heartily at this, making me smile, despite how I feel at the moment. 
Today's victuals have been as delicious as always, Impy. That's great to hear, but with only preserved foods, the selection becomes really limited. Oh, are you unsatisfied with these results? The meals of late are far from boring as far as I'm concerned. It's a matter of principle. As a genius chef, I want to be able to provide a good variety of dishes. Aha! Uh -huh. Since when have you been a genius chef? If I recall correctly, I thought you were a genius engineer. I really enjoy the meals you make for us, Impy. Thanks, but only amateurs wait for the audience to get tired before changing. A first-class chef must always be creative. I see. What do you think, Van Helsing? I look over at him and see that he hasn't touched his meal. Van Helsing, aren't you hungry? Don't mind me. You haven't been eating much lately. Have you been tired of the taste already? Does my cooking bore you? No, it's all delicious. The flavors are so delicate that I still find it hard to believe that you were the cook. Is that a compliment or an insult? A compliment, obviously. It's the greatest praise I have to offer. Your appetite seems to have decreased since De La Croix came to the mansion. Are you worried about him? <laughs> he looks away without another word. I can't help but clamp my mouth shut. I can't jump into whatever issues are between Van Helsing and De La Croix. Was it a mistake to invite the youth vampire to our home without asking about it? He hasn't appeared for breakfast again. I am worried about his condition. He seems to be eating. The plates I take up to his room are always cleaned off. I am planning to take this morning's meal to his room again. I see. That's good to know. Does it make you feel better, Van Helsing? What? I didn't say anything. The problems with De La Croix aside... <sighs> Victor, you've been awfully quiet. You look so serious too, do you have a stomachache or something? What? No. What, who, me? No, nothing's wrong. You do seem down, Victor. R really? Uh, sorry if I seem that way. I don't feel sick or anything like that. Victor smiles while he says this, but he still seems to be a bit out of it. It also seems that Lupin has been running around to a number of different places recently. I haven't seen him lately. We haven't had the opportunity for us all to gather at the dining room table together. Now that he mentions it, everyone has been busy with their own things, or has some sort of reason to be by themselves. I think the last time we were all present for a meal was before we started chasing De La Croix. Hmm, I got it! Chef Impy shall lay out a great feast tonight! Why? Why? To raise the energy level around here. Stuffing yourself with good food makes everyone happy. A feast? That may actually be a good idea. Cooking, huh? Cooking, eh? Hmm, that sounds like a perfect way to blow off steam. Impy, let me cook too. Sure, that's fine, but are you sure you can make anything that turns out to be edible? Who do you think I am? I know what I'm doing. Leave it to me. I see. I know she told me, but you really do love to cook, huh? I wouldn't have expected that of you at all. <laughs> I'm looking forward to trying dishes from both of you. Impy's sudden suggestion has cleared up the gloomy air surrounding the dining table and a peaceful atmosphere comes in. And then we'll have Deli join us, and we'll all have a party. Impy mentions an unfamiliar name. Who's Deli? Hmm? Oh, De La Croix. I got sick of saying his full name all the time, so I figured Deli works. Deli. I try it out. It is much easier to say than calling him De La Croix the second all the time. <laughs> Deli, I think that's a nice nickname that suits his adorable appearance. It's another matter entirely whether he likes this potential sobriquet or not. 
Yes, if Deli says it's okay, I think I'll start calling him that. Impy, you said you could create a feast earlier. You had the ingredients to complete a task like that. We are still in a poor financial state. If we don't have the money to spend, we won't be able to make a satisfying meal. Hmm, these are tough times. You can stop worrying about money. We turn around at this sudden comment. Oh, hello Lupin. Hey guys, what's wrong with you all? You look like hell. Where have you been? Nobody's seen you for the past few days. We've all been worried. I had some things to deal with. Apologies for not telling you in advance, but here are the funds for our future activities. A Lupin turns a heavy looking bag over at the table, and a mountain of bills falls out. L Lupin, where did you get all this? Oh my, that certainly is a heap of money. Heh, just a bit of my handling fee. All this is from a handling fee? I don't really have a good grasp of money yet, but is this much enough to solve our troubles? Our troubles are long gone. With this much, we can even buy ourselves an airship. An airship? I have no idea how much one of those would cost, but if Impy is this excited about it, they're probably very valuable. Then, our money problems are over? Seems that way. I see. This is great news. But... Lupin, this money, did you come by it honestly? Of course, mademoiselle. I swear on my name, Arsene Lupin. He smiles at me while he says this. And I didn't earn this money so we could spend it on lavish things. Let's plan our expenditures more carefully from now on. I'm not going to reprimand you no matter where the money came from, but you must have faced quite an opponent to get this. Something like that. Quite an evildoer indeed, who was quite loaded. An evildoer? What sort of evil was he doing? Are you sure he won't come after us? I wouldn't make a mistake against a small fry like that. Also, I have to make a formal report to someone about what I did. Does anyone have an idea where Delacour the Younger is? I think Deli's in his room. I just came from there and he wasn't in. Damn, where could he be? Uh, Deli? Impy came up with that nickname. Oh, I like it. It suits a little kid like him. Well, if he's not there, I guess I'll go look for him. I'll help. I was going to take some breakfast to him. I had already finished my own meal long before, so I stand and thank him before cooking. As I'm clearing my plates, St. Germain calls out to me. Oh, that's right, Miss Cardia. Are you free this afternoon? Today, I have time. Then would you accompany me shopping? I'd like to gather some good ingredients for our meal tonight. You need to leave the mansion once a day in any case. How about it? Helping him shop? That sounds like something I can do. Alright, I'll come with you. I make the plans for later with St. Germain, then Lupin and I split to search for Delhi. I knock on the door to the boy's room. There is no response. As Lupin said, he is not in his room. He doesn't seem to have returned either. The door isn't locked, but... St. Germain told me that it's rude to enter people's rooms without permission. While I was going through training, the Count taught me how to act like a proper lady while we walked around London. Going in and out without permission would be bad, so don't go in. I need to put his teachings in action. I nod to myself and get ready to leave. Get ready to leave. Maybe I should leave the food here. Perhaps Deli will come back while we're looking elsewhere. I decide to leave his breakfast by the door. Perfect. I gently place the tray next to the door so that it won't spill and head off. 
I wonder where he went. St. Germain's mansion is very big. Even if we're in the same building, it's difficult to find someone here. Perhaps he's wandering aimlessly through the halls, like I used to do. I hope his breakfast doesn't get cold. Impy made such a delicious meal, so it would be best if he could eat it hot. As I'm thinking this... Hey! Hey, stop it! I hear Deli's voice. I go over to a nearby window. <laughs> I said stop! It tickles! It tickles! <laughs> Cece is playing with Deli. <laughs> Don't lick my face so much! <laughs> you... you... <laughs> he looks like he's having fun. I look away and sigh softly. I'm glad Deli is able to laugh. I don't know how, but somehow this makes me feel like things will turn out alright. And suddenly, I remember the time I laughed, and how everyone paid attention to me for it. Maybe they all felt like I do now. I keep this thought in mind, and head over to the garden, filled with a strange joy. Fine, very well. You may serve under me. Isn't it an honor? Oh, you have potential, obeying me without resistance like this. I shall give you the highest seat in my army of darkness. Army of darkness? <laughs> he jumps back at the sound of my voice and takes a fighting stance. But this is pretty much how talking to him always goes, so it doesn't faze me anymore. What, what do you want? I see you and Cece have become friends. <laughs> it's none of your business, but this fellow's name is Cece? Yes, Impy named him. Impy? Uh, the red-haired man who appears to have the lowest intellect in the bunch? A shame to think that named you. Impy is actually pretty impressive. So many people underestimate him. By the way, why does Cece have a mechanical leg? It's... Because someone hurt him before Impy found him. Impy built him that leg so he could walk normally. Deli looks sadly at Cece. They would go so low as to harm a life that, pose that poses no threat to them? Humans are indeed a garbage race. But humans have given Cece a new home, and they are taking care of him now. I think that there are many different kinds of people. Not all of them are bad. And? What have you come here for? I didn't want you to get hungry, so I bought breakfast to your room, but you weren't in, so... Breakfast? Oh, I see. Alright. Yes. He was laughing so easily earlier, but his voice stiffens when talking with us. There was nothing I can do about it, but it makes me angry somehow. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you. Lupin appears, breaking the silence. I have a souvenir for you. A souvenir? You aren't holding anything. Oh, excuse me. Lupin takes a large square cloth from a pocket and lays it on the ground. He slowly pinches it, then lifts it up. And now there is a small suitcase sitting where the cloth had been. You're some kind of a wizard? Unfortunately, I'm just a gentleman thief. This was a trick. Deli looks at him, his eyes wide, as Lupin opens the suitcase. Pay attention to what's inside. You'll be surprised. What is this about? Deli turns his attention to the suitcase, sounding offended by Lupin's attitude. Inside the suitcase is... Those are the treasures of the vampires that I was supposed to take back? The case is filled with beautiful pieces of artwork and gems, all packed in next to one another. You had them all this time? Get them back, they belong to my people. Yes, yes, I know. I stole all these for you. S stole? Lupin shrugs and pushes the suitcase towards the boy. 
Deli accepts it and looks back at Lupin, seemingly in shock. I never steal for myself. I do it for others. I just found where your treasures were kept and picked them up. I looked into these, and the people who own these items were all making dirty money. It felt good to steal from them. Wh what What is the meaning of this? I have no way to repay you for these. Even as he says this, he pushes the suitcase behind him with one foot, as if it truly is important to him. Don't worry. I'm not going to take them back. I've already been paid handsomely by the folks I stole them from. Oh. The handling fee you mentioned. Exactly. How do you like it, Sir De La Croix? This is how a real thief gets things done. Lupin spins once, then gives the boy a graceful bow. I'm not going to thank you. I should be thanking you. Going after these artifacts allowed me to earn a huge amount of money in a way I view ethical. I see. So it's Deli who's to thank for getting you to take action. Hold on! You can't possibly be calling me Deli, can you? I will not be referred to by such a ridiculous name. De La, De La Croix the Second. De La Croix the Second is a mouthful. It's not making fun of you. It's a step towards true friendship. What do you say? You don't like it? Uh, of course not! Suddenly, Deli's stomach rumbles. Oh, I left some breakfast by the door to your room, if you want it. I... I don't need breakfast! Deli starts running back to the mansion, then turns back to us. I will not thank you! I'm not indebted to you at all! Lupin shrugs as we watch Deli run off. Lupin, thank you. Huh? There's no reason you should be thanking me. What's this about? I'm just... speaking on Deli's behalf. Lupin smiles and walks back to the mansion. I return to Cece, who is laying down quietly. Cece, do you want to see Deli with me? Cece wags his tail and looks at me. I'm very happy you made a new friend. Cece barks energetically. Vegetables, meat, and seasoning. We've got the mechanical part Impy asked for, as well as the chemical Victor wanted. Phew. It looks like we finally have everything we need. As promised, the Count and I went into the town that afternoon. Are you sure we can carry all of that? Are you sure you can carry all of that? I can take some of those. Ah, oh, <laughs> this is nothing. You're already carrying something for me. Yes, well, yes, but... I'm holding only a small paper bag with two apples inside. The Count is holding five large bags filled with meats and produce in each arm. It must be heavy. Really, I'll take some. No need. It's a matter of etiquette for a lady to allow a man to have his moment of glory. I nod reluctantly at St. Germain's picture-perfect smile. I wonder how much weight he's carrying in each arm. It must take an immense amount of strength. I look at my own two hands. I wonder if I'd be able to handle that. Van Helsing did say that I was unbelievably fast and hardy during our training. Count, I'd really like to try... As I'm turning to him to say this, I see a boy selling papers to people around him. Extra, extra, read all about it! The boy steps in front of us and holds up one of the papers he's hawking. I wonder if something big has happened. I'm curious, so I look at the paper. The headline makes me gasp the moment I see it clearly. Violent terrorist, Victor Frankenstein, attempts bombing passenger train. Military Technology Advisor Finnis stops would-be attack in its tracks. May have been a target of may have been the target of an assassination attempt. I see that the government has stepped up their search efforts in, in the hunt for Dr. Frankenstein. But Victor would never try to destroy a train with people on board. 
He did disconnect the cars, but this seems over the top. We need to come up with some countermeasures. We need to head back and tell the others. You're right. We finished up our shopping here. Shall we head back? St. Germain smiles his usual smile and begins walking in the opposite direction of the mansion. Count, what's the matter? You're going the wrong way. We're being followed. What? There are three of them. It seems they're highly trained. Twilight, no doubt. Twilight is here? Yes, but try not to give away that we've noticed them. Let's let them follow us for a bit and grow complacent. Come, Miss Cardia, let's go. Oh, right. The Count begins to walk, and I hurry to catch up. We have a rare opportunity for some hands-on training here. Let's make sure not to let it go to waste. You want to train me now? Indeed. From this point on, the danger that you'll encounter can only grow. In order to increase your survival rate in situations like these, a training session that is just a touch too dangerous fits the bill perfectly. I nod, trying to keep my pace even with his. But don't fret. At the very least, I will be sure to protect you should anything happen here. Now, how should you act in this situation? Um, let's see, whoops. Oh, how am I supposed to know? S uh, keep walking down Main Street? I wouldn't do anything. I'd keep walking down a busy street. And why is that? Victor said so, too. Twilight agents work in the shadows. They don't come out in the open unless it's absolutely necessary. So, they wouldn't attack on a busy street like this one. Also, it's easier to hide among a crowd. Very good. I say the answer deserves a passing mark. Is that the right answer, then? No, unfortunately. There is no right answer to this question. St. Germain suddenly tosses his bags aside and takes my hand. This way, Miss Cardia. The moment he pulls me away... A sharp spear thuds into the ground where I had been standing just a second ago. I can't believe they'd thrown a weapon into a crowd like this. The people around us begin to notice that things are amiss and confusion spreads. Before we can move, the Twilight Soldiers are ready to strike again. Let's retreat for now, into that alleyway. As the crowd grows louder, I run into a nearby alley, St. Germain, right behind. When the enemy throws common sense out the window, sensible tactics no longer prove effective. Remember this, there is no such thing as certain victory. Anywhere humans are involved. I understand. I turn away from him, ready to start running again, but my feet come to a halt. There are several Twilight Soldiers, standing before us with swords drawn. As I suspected, it was a trap to lure us away from the main street. Their tactics are very by the book. He says this softly and with a smile, as if this all falls in line with his predictions. Several of the men take cautious stances. There is no room to run in the narrow alley. Just as Lupin and Van Helsing taught me, I quickly check my surroundings. St. Germain, I can buy us some time in this restricted space. I have a small smoke bomb in my pocket. Victor had given it to me just in case something happened. I close my hand around it as I continue. I'll distract them. Can you get past them and get help from the others? Oh? So you're telling me to desert you and flee? Their objective is to capture me, but they might kill you. I appreciate your concern, but don't worry. These men are incapable of killing me. What? Without holding a single weapon, St. Germain steps in front of me. The Twilight Soldiers hold up their swords threateningly. Now, 
don't. Watch out. The instant I shout this, a large wooden box slams into one of the soldiers from the side. He careens into another soldier, and they both go down. The Twilight troops respond quickly. The other soldiers spin around and then disappear into the darkness of the alley. The fallen soldiers are up in an instant and follow the rest. Retreat if an encounter introduces an unknown element. It seems their fear of being caught, and possibly disclosing information, is greater than their desire to capture us. But what just happened? A new figure appears from around the corner, as if waiting for a cue. A long time no see, my lady. I am glad you aren't hurt. You... Oh? Do you know one another? Not really. He's the mystery man who got in the way of our plan to capture Finnis. Lupin had a really tough time with him. Haha, <laughs> you speak of me as if I'm a villain. Here, in this situation, I should be seen as the hero who saved you. Thank you, I guess. I see. How funny that we encounter you here again. It's as if you've been following us to begin with. I'll leave that to your imagination. But, why did you save us? You were trying to stop us before. It's a detective's job to prevent crime, is what I'd like to say. But I'm actually off duty right now. It wasn't work that motivated me to act. If I may also add, does a gentleman need a reason to come to a lady's rescue? I see. He continues speaking without hesitation. Herlock Sholmes suddenly stops to take a breath and faces us. Now, as a gentleman is no doubt already aware, it's no coincidence that I'm here. I was following both of you, and those who left us just now. I see. So you were following Twilight, who was following us. We had two tales. Indeed, there are many things I'd like to ask those Twilight folks. But first you two. Sholmes makes a gesture to indicate that he is thinking. Within the past few days, a number of treasures said to have been owned by vampires were stolen, along with a fortune. The items were stolen using brilliant techniques. This was the work of your friend Lupin, wasn't it? <sighs> My eyes dart about at this unexpected question. If someone like Sholmes finds out it was Lupin's doing, then he's going to be caught. I take a few deep breaths. I calm myself down so that I can keep a cool demeanor while we speak. And then... I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. My words tumble out awkwardly. <laughs> you're a poor liar. Your genuine nature is one of the best things about you. But I must eventually teach you how to conceal your thoughts. Please do. While our conversation remains light, Saint Germain gently moves in front of me, as if to protect me. And now that you know this fact, what are you going to do with us? I don't intend to do anything. This was simply to confirm facts. I would have been fine if you denied it. But this young lady here... Hmm... Now that I think on it, I was never properly introduced. Since we've been happily reunited, I would like to please know your name. Cardia. Since I have no reason to turn him down, I simply state my name. He tweaks his mouth as if chewing on something, and nods, seemingly satisfied. I've committed your name to memory. Thank you, Cardia. Back to what we had been talking about. If the culprit of those thefts is one of your friends, for now, you're not my enemy. As I said earlier, I'm off duty right now, just an average citizen enjoying this day off. You say for now, which means there may be the possibility that you will become our enemy in the future? Yes, we'll be enemies starting tomorrow morning, to be exact. I've received requests to assist Scotland Yard, as well as one from the military. 
It seems the British government is sparing no expense in an attempt to capture the violent criminal Victor Frankenstein. There is permission to kill him on the spot if it becomes necessary. No! Twilight and the military have quite similar tactics. Whose request are you going to accept? I will always stand by the law, even if the law is unjust. That is how we maintain order in society. Although I have yet to find out their true intentions, I will gladly cooperate with them if it means the law is upheld. Aha, uh -huh. your philosophy on justice is the polar opposite of Lupin's. Arsene Lupin, a gentleman thief who adheres to his own definition of justice. If we allow his methods to continue, and the masses to emulate his ways, I believe it will leave us with chaos. Lupin wouldn't do something like that. I wonder. Whatever the result, a crime is a crime. Either way, I just wanted to give you a warning. A warning? Yes, if I'm forced to seriously come after you, I will uncover your location and schemes in no time flat. I suggest that you leave Britain as soon as you can. I see. There may actually be another option. Saint Germain glances over at me and relaxes. But I'll refrain from that one. You did save our lives. I will take your warning to heart. Sholmes nods. Then, if you'll excuse me, the next time we meet, it will be as enemies. Don't take it personally. With this, Sholmes leaves us. What an unexpected encounter. Yes. I continue to look away in the direction he left in. I wonder why. Even though they look nothing alike, I feel Sholmes and Lupin have something in common. Hey, Saint Germain, don't you think that Sholmes and Lupin are alike? Those two? Let me think. Both feel an immense responsibility for their actions and have unwavering confidence in themselves. Perhaps this stance is the common ground between them. You're right, they share that extreme self-confidence. I nod in agreement with his accurate point. <laughs> Though that may be, it's probably best not to mention any similarities to Lupin. Why not? When you escaped that train, it seemed that Detective Sholmes was toying with Lupin quite a bit. Toying? Sholmes? Not Lupin? Yes. He was quite upset about it. They barely managed to escape with Impy's help, but he was angry. The whole ordeal caused a delay in your rescue. He toyed with Lupin. That Sholmes person must be very skilled. It certainly looks like he would be a tricky one to handle. It does seem like our complications have been taken care of. Shall we go? I nod in response. But St. Germain begins walking in a completely different direction, back to the mansion. St. Germain, are we being followed again? I run to catch up to him and lower my voice to ask, but when he stops and laughs. <laughs> That's not it. Do you remember why we came out here in the first place? Oh, shopping. The Count smiles and nods at my response. Okay, that's where I'm going to end this video before it gets too long. I hope you'll come back to hear the rest of it, to hear some more in the next episode. Um, I hope to see you in some other future videos too. I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. De really signing out. Bye bye everybody.